Welcome back Eco Warriors to the Institute of Urban Ecology. I'm Naomi. We're going there folks. On today's episode, we're going to talk about bats. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, if I were to ask you to think of an endangered species, one of these probably comes to mind first. However, did you know that worldwide there are currently 181 different species of bats that are listed as either vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered by the IUCN. Here in British Columbia, we have 16 different species of bats, eight of which are recognized by the Canadian government as species at risk of extinction. Why are so many bats endangered? Why do we even care? Bats are gross, but let's face it. Bats have never been the most popular animal out there, especially now. But in today's episode, we're not only gonna talk about how you can help save the bats, but more importantly, why we should help save the bats. So let's get started. Let's start off by addressing some of those bat rumors that you've probably been hearing about since you were a kid. We'll do this by playing a little game of true or false. Yay! True or false. Bats are just like flying rats or flying rodents. This is false. <laughs> Although both bats and rodents are mammals, like all of these BC mammals, bats lack those characteristic rodent front teeth. Bats are actually really unique in that they are the world's only flying mammal, which means just like most other mammals on Earth, they are warm-blooded, furry, and bat pups need to nurse milk from their mothers. True or false, bats have rabies. This is actually true. However, only a very, very small percent of bats carry the disease. According to the BC Center for Disease Control, only about 0.5% of all bats carry rabies. You can find out more about rabies on the BC Center for Disease Control website listed in the video description below. True or false? Bats suck blood. True. Vampire bats are real. They do not turn into Dracula and they are the only bats that drink blood. But they do not live here in British Columbia. Vampire bats can be found in Central and South America and they prefer to drink cow's or horse's blood over that of humans. Here's the big one, folks. True or false, bats spread the coronavirus. Drum roll, please. We don't know for sure yet. According to the World Health Organization, bats from the genus Rhinolophus do carry a closely related version of the virus found in humans. Rhinolophus bats are found across Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. However, it is still unclear if the virus spread directly from bats to humans or if there was another intermediate host involved. Check out our resource section again to learn more about bats and the COVID-19 virus from the World Health Organization's website. True or false, bats are blind. This is false. <laughs> Bats can actually see just as well, if not better, than you and I can at night. Look at these little beady bat eyes. Bats also use echolocation to help them hunt at night, especially those bats that hunt insects. As you can imagine though, it's not easy catching a fly in the dark, even with good eyesight. That echolocation helps the bats pinpoint where their prey is with deadly accuracy. Some other cool bat facts. Bats do hang upside down when they're asleep, and they're able to do this because the muscles in their feet work backwards to ours. When their muscles are relaxed, their toes and feet curl up like a fist, and they actually need to flex their muscles in order to release their grip. Fun fact number two, the world's smallest bat is the bumblebee bat, which is, as you guessed it, no bigger than a large bumblebee. The world's largest bat is the flying fox, 
with a wingspan of up to two meters. Take a look at this bat skeleton. Look familiar? Because bats are mammals like us, they have almost the same skeletons, except bats' hands and finger bones are way longer because a bat's wings are actually its hands. Like my mother always used to say, don't believe everything you see on TV. With the internet and social media these days, false news and misinformation can spread like wildfire. So whenever you're looking for the answer to one of life's burning questions, you must, must, must look for a reliable resource. Google doesn't sort fact from fiction for you, and the news is often biased or exaggerates the stories that they're telling. Wikipedia isn't the most reliable resource either. When looking for a reliable resource, look at who is publishing the information. Is it a government site or maybe an education site? Look at why they're publishing that information. Is this an entertainment article or is the author maybe trying to convince you of something? Look at how old the information is and also look to see if the author provides you with other resources and other sources to help back up their claims or the information that they are giving you. You should also look for multiple resources as well and make sure that your own search isn't biased. There's always two sides to every coin. And although I really, really want to believe that bats are good, some of these rumors might actually be true as long as there are resources to back them up. A good place to look for reliable information is googlescholar.gov.ed or .ac websites. Okay, so now that we understand bats a little bit more, why should we care? Would we really miss them if all the bats were gone? Spoiler alert, yes. There are kind of two main types or different types of bats around the world. There are insectivore bats, which are bats that eat insects, and then there are fruit bats. And both provide the ecosystems with some very important services. We don't have any fruit bats here in British Columbia. However, fruit bats worldwide play two important roles as pollinators and seed dispersers. According to the USDA, over 300 types of plants depend on bats for pollination and seed dispersal, including bananas, mangoes, and agave. Here in BC, all 16 types of our bats only eat insects, and they need to eat a lot. One study in New Hampshire found that one little brown bat weighing seven to nine grams, could eat up to 3.7 grams of insects in one night. The Canadian Species at Risk Act estimates that one female bat could eat up to her entire body weight in insects per night. That's approximately 1,000 insects per night. And by looking at the bat's guano, they found that mosquitoes made up most of their diet in the summertime. So what's happening to the world's bats? Why are so many in danger of going extinct? There's a lot happening in our urban ecosystems that make this a pretty dangerous place for a bat to live. These are the most common killers of bats. Habitat loss, pesticide use, and misunderstanding are the three most deadly factors in our urban ecosystems. White nose syndrome is a highly contagious fungus that has killed over 6.7 million bats in North America alone. I haven't included it as one of BC's top three killers though, because there haven't been any records of the fungus here yet. However, it is present in Alberta and Washington. Just like many species, habitat loss is one of the biggest threats, especially in urban areas like here. For those insect eating bats, pesticides are also a big, big problem. Not only are there fewer insects for the bats to eat, but surviving insects could still be contaminated by small or less lethal doses of the toxin. The bats then eat those contaminated insects and the pesticides can accumulate to serious, even lethal levels for the bats. On top of all these things, bats do not reproduce very quickly. Most female bats can only have one pup per year, which makes it really hard for populations to grow or recover. Now the good stuff. There are some things that you can do today 
to help save the bats from extinction. First off, vote. Vote to help protect your local natural resources and participate in forest cleanups or tree plantings. If you can't stop their natural habitat from being destroyed, then make your own bat habitat by building one of these simple bat houses from bcbats.ca. Because all 16 of our BC bat species only eat insects, help stop the widespread use of toxic pesticides by refusing to use them in your home garden. There are plenty of natural alternatives to using pesticides like biological controls, ladybugs, beetles, and of course, the bats. We'll show you how to attract more beneficial insects into your garden in another episode, so stay tuned for that. Shopping organic and supporting farms that don't use pesticides will have a larger impact on the bats than you might think. I know organic produce is expensive and I can't always afford to shop organic either, but if you can, try to purchase these 12 products. The USDA regularly tests the amount of pesticide residue left on various fruits and vegetables. Based on this data, the Environmental Working Group has put together their list of which 12 fruits and vegetables had the highest levels of contamination and which 15 had the lowest. If you can't afford to buy all your produce organic, at least try to buy these 12. Not just for your own health, but for the bats as well. On top of all those negative rumors, people tend to fear those things that we don't know or don't understand. So what's the coolest thing you learned about bats today? Share that information as well, because the more people know or start to understand these animals, the more they'll realize just how important they are to our urban ecosystems and the more likely that they'll want to help as well. For more reliable resources on bat information, check out the resources in our comment section below. Or if you want to ask us a question, you can send us an email or reach us on social media. Or again, leave a comment down below and we'll do our very best to help you. Until next time, Eco Warriors, thank you and we'll see you soon.